Today I'm doing yet another video about a graphics card, and I'll be honest, I'm not happy about it. Maybe you guys aren't too. Why? Because you cannot buy the new Radeon RX 6700 XT. It is already sold out. The $480 launch price listing is meaningless. GPUs are like supercars now. You can read over the specs and you can ogle the performance, but for many consumers, there's no spark of interest because they just seem so far out of reach. So here's what I'm gonna do today, and there are timestamps in the description so you can jump to what interests you or just skip the video and entirely. First, I'm gonna vent, get a few things off my chest. I think that should be fun. Then I'll do a really quick summary of the specs on the 6700 XT and what you should expect when it comes to performance versus Nvidia's offerings in the same price range. And finally, I'm gonna do some real world 1440p game testing with a performance overlay so you can get a better idea of how this card actually performs while gaming. That's it. Intro complete. Excellent! Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So when it comes to graphics cards lately, how do I put this delicately? All is lost and I have given myself over to bitterness and despair. For over six months now, stock has been a joke, retail prices are an even worse joke, and as a person who makes internet tech videos about building gaming PCs, there's just no good way for me to address this situation. Cryptocurrency mining is to blame, and oh look, since I said that, there's already some mining fanatic in the comments berating me for blaming them because it's a free country or because it's the future of the global economy or whatever, and they should be able to do what they want with their pretty graphics cards. For what it's worth, I do see some very real positives to cryptocurrency and decentralization in particular, but there are massive negatives too when it comes to the environment, and yes, personally and selfishly, what it has done to the gaming graphics card market and how that has affected actual gamers who just want to get a GPU so they can relax and have some fun in their free time. I don't wanna to get too sidetracked though, so to be way too blunt about it, here are the three groups influencing me of late when it comes to GPU launch videos. First, there are the vendors, AMD and Nvidia, and their add in board partners who want me to cover the product that's launching. They want eyeballs and viewer awareness of the new shiny thing that they made, and I'm generally fine to provide that as long as I can also give honest feedback on the performance and the design, which is typically how a review should work from my understanding. There's not too much of a problem there, except that AMD and Nvidia keep launching new GPUs and expecting us to go about business as usual, apparently without considering the market situation. And again, personally and selfishly, if I'm gonna spend the extra three to five days required to do a full benchmark comparison review for a card like this, with multiple games and resolutions and graphics cards and bar charts and ray tracing on and off and resizable bar support on and off and all those other variables, but then my video's performance sucks because interest was already dismal and there are 10 plus reviews instantly published when the embargo lifts and no one needs much of a second or third or fourth opinion on a card that they can't buy anyway. Well then I have to look at this as a business person myself much as I hate doing that, and my ROI for the time spent becomes more important to me than meeting my standards for what I think is a good review. And maybe that's just way too honest right now, but that is 100% why I am formatting this video the way that I am. Now the second group I hear from regularly is my regular viewers, all of you gamers and PC builders out there, where the frustration with the GPU shortage is thick and tangible. Many of you have asked me to stop covering graphics cards at all until the shortage is over, or some have asked me what I can do to fix it. You guys make my channel and my livelihood possible, and I feel your frustration, and I wish I could do something to fix it for the sake of you and me and for everyone who wants to buy a GPU at MSRP, but I don't know what I can do beyond trying to explain the situation as rationally as I can and to ask people to not buy GPUs at marked up prices and I guess to speak about cryptocurrency objectively so we can acknowledge both its benefits and its downsides. If you guys see ways that I could do more though, I am all ears so leave me those comments down below. Finally there's the third group, the cryptocurrency fans out there and while I don't really cater to the crypto community with my content outside of the basic help that might come from my how to build a PC guides, I do hear from them pretty regularly. Basically anything that I say that can be construed as 
negative or critical towards cryptocurrency is bound to get a vociferous reply from someone who is profiting from it. And for what it's worth, I understand. I have long believed that pretty much everything boils down to economics in the world we live in, and it's hard to tell people who are making money to stop doing that. If you're a gamer and you want GPUs to be widely available for reasonable prices again, your argument for that probably also boils down to cryptocurrency miners need to stop profiting from GPU mining. There isn't a good alternative solution for that right now though, since no one has taken me up on my idea to create cryptocurrency mining puppies that use captured carbon for fuel. So I'm not gonna try to sort that out right now. I'm just ranting and venting here. But conversely, if you're firmly in the cryptocurrency is good camp, but you're not willing to acknowledge the impacts on the environment or the gaming GPU market, I don't think you're giving me the same fair shake that I am giving you. For my part though, I will do my best to try to understand both communities in order to encourage discussion and problem solving rather than just screaming at each other from the extreme sides of a divisive issue. Okay, enough of my yapping, let's quickly go over this card and my gaming setup. The RX 6700 XT I have is the reference design card from AMD and is similar in many ways to the design of the RX 6800 and 6900 XT with a 10.5 inch long wraparound shroud with ventilation on either side. There are two cooling fans now instead of three, and it's a two-slot design with a red backlit Radeon logo and a red accent around the shroud, which is otherwise black and silver. Other specs should be up on the screen right now. It is based on the Navi 22 XT GPU and is fully PCIe 4.0 compatible with three DisplayPort 1.4 video outs and one HDMI 2.1. There is one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCI Express graphics power connector, and AMD recommends a 550-watt power supply for a build with this GPU in it. I'm not showing direct performance comparisons to NVIDIA today, but I can give you guys a summary of what to expect. When it comes to traditional shading and rasterization, the RX 6700 XT is faster than the RTX 3060 Ti in a significant majority of games, and can be faster than an RTX 3070 in a handful of titles as well. When ray tracing is turned on though, AMD still lags behind, and apart from a few RDNA 2 optimized titles, Nvidia has the upper hand, so if ray tracing is important to you, then an RTX card will still give you better results. I'll link to some additional reviews in the description too, if you want to see some more side by side comparisons. For my test system today though, I have an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X with an NZXT Kraken X62 all-in-one liquid cooler, a 16 gig kit of G-Skill Trident Z Royal RGB DDR4 3600 speed CL16 memory, a Gigabyte Aorus Master X570 motherboard, and a Corsair HX1000i power supply. I'm gonna be gaming at 2560 by 1440 and AMD Smart Access Memory or resizable bar support is enabled. One final note, despite what you might have heard, my gaming prowess is not quite up there with your eSports professionals. I suck quite often, but fortunately that won't affect the 6700 XT's performance. I'll try to give you guys an idea of what my skill level is for each game though, since it's definitely zero for some of them. Let's get started. So here we are with the first game, which is Cyberpunk 2077, and I've attempted to show the game, the resolution, and my skill level in the top right corner there. Also on screen is the frame rate up in the top left. I put a little bar chart there as well, and you can see stats, uh, just frequency and temperature for both the CPU and the GPU as I'm playing along. All the games I'm playing today will be at 2560 by 1440, and for this particular game, we are going with the high presets, and that should be pretty standard all around. So I'm just gonna play each game for about 10 minutes or so, so we can get an idea of the frame rate we're achieving and stuff like that. And as you can probably see in the top right corner, I have pretty much zero experience playing cyberpunk. I'm a nomad in case it wasn't obvious and uh, I have a pretty cool character design that I skipped over showing you guys. Uh, we're currently getting around 70 frames per second, although it's getting up a little bit above that from time to time. If you guys are noticing any tearing on screen, that's because I have VSync turned off and that's so we can see the frame rate that we're actually getting rather than it being locked to 60 FPS or something like that. Oh, I feel the side missions and side quests calling to me already in this game. This, this is a game that it requires time investment, and that's not exactly what I'm doing today. Frame rate's not too much different on foot here. Again, 70 in general, getting up into the upper 70s from time to time. Ooh, ladder climbing. Much higher frame rate while climbing ladders. Another thing I wanted to point out is that I'm going to try to game slightly better today. I'm not the greatest gamer. I don't play a lot of games because I don't have a lot of time to play games. There are some games that I feel like I've invested a little bit more time in. But like I was saying, there are some games that I've played some and I feel like I can do an okay job at, like probably Overwatch is one of those. And then there's other games that I, I'm just completely brand new at, so don't have real high hopes. But one thing that I have done today to give myself an edge is you'll notice I'm wearing headphones. I can actually hear the game today. When I did this with the RTX 3060, I was not able to hear any of the games because of how I was, had the capture set up. Who's that guy? 
I don't know who that guy is. It looks like I could kill him if I wanted to, though. Let's try to kill him. Oh, what happened? An illegal activity will result in the getting a bounty. Okay. Oh, I killed the dude. Oh, no. Oh, I'm being attacked. I guess I shouldn't have killed that dude. Oh, gosh. Hey, that's more excitement now, though. Cops are on my tail. How many stars wanted level do I have? I evaded the police. Police don't try very hard in Cyberpunk. I do like the design of this game so far from what I'm seeing. Just, I don't know, lots of unique textures and art. And, and it seems like they've done at least a fair amount of work in these initial areas of uh, creating an ambiance of sort of a, a wasteland rundown, sort of a techno-punk or cyberpunk, I guess I should say, a little bit more accurate. This is also looking pretty good, even in high settings, I will also say. And I'm really curious to like get into the city and, and explore this game more. And I feel bad that I'm having to skip so much, but uh, I have like more games to play. So I'm going to call that quits for Cyberpunk 2077 for now and uh, look forward to playing this some more in the future, probably. Next game, time for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Again, 2560 by 1440. We're going with ultra global rendering quality. And again, V-Sync is off. My first goal here is to try to salvage a little bit of dignity from uh, my last attempt at this. And for that, I'm going to do the landing that I've done the most often in this game, which is the one that I typically use for benchmarking, which is Sydney. All right, now I'm flying. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, there's not a lot to, to see in this. I mean, I can look around a little bit as I'm coming in on approach here. My landing gear is already down, but uh, I, I do want to point out, by the way, that I am capturing all this footage on a separate capture system. So the only thing that's running on this system with the 5600X and the 6700 XT is the game. I'm also running uh, Riva Tuner, which is showing the on-screen display, and then I'm running hardware info as well as MSI Afterburner, also to hook some of that info that's on screen, and I'm still working on developing that. I think I could add a few more little bits of detail there to it, but uh, we'll figure that out at some point. Now my face is blocking it down here in the lower right corner, but I am watching my altitude and I'm making sure that I am uh, in a, I'm not gonna use the right terminology, I'm in a decline. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing altitude, but at a, at a reasonably stable pace. I also wanna keep an eye on my engines in the lower right because I will want to slow down at some point here as I get closer and closer to the runway. And I've actually made a very stable, decent landings on this runway multiple times, and I'll see what I can do here. Frame rate though, we're in the 30s, in the 30s. Uh, Flight Simulator is a challenging game to run, and uh, it takes a lot of GPU horsepower to even get it up towards 60 FPS, so mid 30s is actually not terrible. What's happening? Oh, I had a big hang right there, but I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm coming in, little, little hot, little hot, little hot. Pull up, pull up, wait, wait, slow down. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to kill my engines. A little bounce, but you know what? I'm on the ground. Look at that. I did not crash. I'm, I'm rolling to a stop. I don't think this is going to be a very high score with the landing, but I think I at least showed that, yeah, I can land a plane. <laughs> Look at that. I'm ranked 74,182nd out of all of the uh, scores of people that have submitted for that landing. All right, let's try something else. All right, for better or worse, I'm going back to Nepal because that was what I attempted last time and I, I sucked really bad. Let's see if I can do any better. So this one I found much more challenging because it's a much lighter weight plane and uh, also because the first couple times I, I barely even could figure out where the runway was. And there's certain things that I'm still not 100% up on. I've actually done the tutorial in this game and learned a few like details about the planes and like flaps and stuff like attitude and whatever. But uh, then I didn't play it for a couple weeks and I totally forgot all that. So this plane just wants to get high, go higher and higher no matter what I do. That's interesting. It probably has something to do with the flaps. Oh, there's my flaps. I figured out how to do my flaps. Oh, that's way better. My flaps only have three positions. That goes higher, that goes lower. All right, that'll help. All right, I'm already feeling like putting my flaps in the right position was like the key thing that was destroying me at this before. Also, uh, we got up above 40 frames per second, so, so that's nice. Uh, I'm still coming in pretty hot here. I need to kill the engines. Oh. Oh dear. Oh. All right. All right. Stall, 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 stall. Oh no, the end of the runway. All right, I crashed. All right, I immediately fixed my flaps. So now it's got me, it's got me going down. What I need, to, I need to figure out like, how do you slow down that much on this runway? It's a short runway. Brakes, brakes, 
Ah, all right, well, that's as close as I'm gonna get on that one, I think. All right, let's move on. Let's see how much we can make Editor Joe cringe by playing some Apex Legends, again, 1440. And I tried to go for some sort of mid-range settings, V-Sync's disabled, of course, yet again. But I went with uh, high and medium for the most part. And that's just to see if we can get a few more frames, since this is a competitive online game where people might be looking at, like, 2560 by 1440 and playing at maybe 144 hertz. Uh, refresh rate or something like that. And yes, my skill level at this game is still pretty stinking bad. Uh, I would I would up it by a point or two if I was playing with Joe, but Joe couldn't play with me today due to some logistical issues. I'm gonna be lifeline because I can throw out a healing thing and that's the like most useful thing that I can probably do. Starting off with the drop in here and we're getting right around 144 FPS, I guess up into the 150s. Usually frame rates are a little bit lower on the drop in and they uh, come up a little bit once you land. Oh, there's another team dropping in right next to us. Oh. oh, there's a dude right there. He's gonna shoot me. Give me something. Give me anything. I have a gun. Oh, it's a Mozambique. Of course it is. I will try to join my teammates. I'm just happy that I'm actually able to to play this game for more than a few seconds without dying. And hey, again, frame rates uh, with this setting is quite nice, I would say. You're gonna want to be up above 144 if you're aiming for 144. Uh, in terms of like a, a sort of a lower end frame rate. So getting up into the 170s and 180s, even closer to 200 with some situations is pretty good. Oh geez, I ran right into that grenade. I did some damage. <laughs> no. All right, I died. Hey. Apex Legends. I, uh... <laughs> so look at that. Damage dealt right there. Obviously, I, I totally outperformed Stan Dark here, although he did have a kill, so um, it's a bit of a trade-off there. All right, I've gone ahead and turned most stuff to disabled and low for the most part. Here's a quick look at the, those settings uh, just to see what the highest frame rate we can get if we don't really care what things look like. Oh, we got, we got other teams just right on top of us. They're right on top of us. Already a little bit higher frame rate here in the drop-in. Getting the, the 170s and 180s, now above 200 as we're getting closer to the ground level. It's just right into the middle of a something. I've got, I need a weapon. Ooh, armor, that's helpful. Wingman, where's my team? Oh no, I already lost someone. The frame rate, frame rate is above 200. So you can get well above 200 if you're willing to turn some stuff down, so that's convenient. Oh no, run away, run away. <laughs> that's, my, that's my strategy in this game. Just if someone shoots at me, run as quickly as I can. I'm bleeding out again already. This isn't looking very good. Okay, but the point was, did you see that frame rate being higher than it was before? Isn't that a good point? Let's go away, other lifeline. Stop it. Ah, oh, they punched me. On the plus side, I can uh, report on the frame rate here, and I don't have to talk. I don't have to play at the same time. Nice peak frame rates, still getting well up above 200, although it does dip down below uh, 150 from time to time. Again, just depends on what you're doing in the game. Oh, look at that. Look at that, we're still in this. Yay. I am just like naked running around. I have a knockdown shield, so I feel like I'm in good shape. Sure, a sniper rifle. I can sometimes shoot people with sniper rifles. <laughs> well, that, that's not very good. Ah, shoot. Well, not looking good, guys. Tried my best. <laughs> I made the ever so slightly a tiny amount of help to my team, but sorry, Papega Squad. Um, I hope you guys get a better teammate next time. That has been some Apex Legends. Let's move on. Time for some Doom Eternal. So this is a Vulcan game, and once again, 
1440, full screen, all that good stuff. We're playing with the Nightmare preset. So let's see how that goes. So this is a Vulcan-based game, and this is a game that can get pretty high frame rates. It can also, of course, turn the graphics up even more to like Ultra Nightmare or something like that, but this is what I've been testing at, so we'll give this a shot. Also, I am now aware that uh, the big spider brain things are just called Arachnotron, and uh, I will try to, uh, you know, call it by the proper name from now on. So we're definitely getting some dips uh, in certain scenarios, close-up situations. It is dropping down to the low 100s from time to time, but also staying, you know, in the mid to upper uh, hundreds beyond that. Oh no, it's an Arachnotron! I'm getting just some toll hangs here and there. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Die, Arachnotron, die. Good, good. Now you might have noticed that uh, I upped my, my estimated skill level for this game to five out of 10. And that is because I have played a fair amount of the Doom games in the past. Uh, when it comes to FPSs, like, I don't think I'm the best shot in the world, but I can aim and shoot for the most part. So I decided to give myself just, just a few more points there. And uh, beyond that, I'd say it's just the specifics of this game that I'm maybe a little bit rusty with, because I really only barely played it for some benchmarking here and there. And I do really appreciate the Doom games, because they're, they're so fast-paced and smooth and fluid, and they're really designed in a way that you're just supposed to sort of charge through them, blasting stuff and healing yourself along the way. And it's lots of fun. I can tell why Doom Eternal has uh, been very well received. Pretty cool environments that they set up in this game too, you know, you got like a lake of fire over here and it's this massive citadel thing with rockets on the side and some big mech that's been partially destroyed. Still pretty steadily hitting around the 200 frames per second mark with these settings and this resolution, which again, not very shabby at all, especially if you're playing on a higher refresh rate 1440 monitor. Oh gosh, it's another Arachno. Die Arachnotron, die. Haha. <laughs> All right, I, I accomplished my goal. The Arachnotron is dead. Obviously the last Arachnotron in this game, so I think we can call it quits here. This, this has been fun, playing some Doom Eternal, shooting some demons, busting some heads. Splat. All right, let's move on. Uh, I'm trying to play Call of Duty Warzone, but it's not letting me. Well, this was supposed to be my next game, Call of Duty Warzone. However, it is down on some level. I've checked, and this does seem to be a widespread problem, so I can't play this game right now, but I do have a backup. So here's Dirt 5. I wanted to throw a driving game in there, since I don't do that very often, and uh, Dirt 5 is the one that I had available that's relatively new and everything. So again, 1440, we're going with uh, pretty much the high preset across the board, and I have, again, turned V-Sync off. And uh, my skill level in this game is back down to one because this is my first time ever, ever, ever playing it. I, I do consider myself like decent at driving games, like I played a good amount of GTA V, but we'll see how I do. I'm already figuring out the controls and like, oh, if I push down in, on the stick that it shows what's behind me. Um, but cool, we're already getting over 100 frames per second, so I suppose that's good out of the gate. So I have no idea in this game if like my car is gonna end up destroyed if I keep banging into things and then it'll stop working. It, I do appear to be taking some damage on already as you can see by my trunk there. But um, I'm, again, I'm mainly focusing on the frame rate here, or trying to, because we're getting above, up above 100. You probably wanna adjust some settings, turn some stuff down if you were on a 1440, 144 hertz display. But good to know we're at least up in that ballpark. And I am currently in fifth place in this race. So maybe I should have given myself a little bit more benefit of the doubt. Maybe I should have been like, hey, maybe my skill is like a two or a three here since I, I've got that inherent driving capability. Have you noticed the frequency that the 6700 XT has been running at for like a good chunk of all my gameplay? Sticking well above 2500 megahertz, often getting above 2600 megahertz. And it is getting a little bit warmer. I mean, it's in the mid to upper 70s, but that's not horrible. And it's not being too loud for me either here. I have noticed a, a bit of uh, coil whine with this particular card. Not like horrible, horrible, but in particular in the menus and stuff when the frame rate's really high. But I will say that as I'm playing right now, with the headphones on and everything, I can't hear the card at all. We're on lap two and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to get up into the top three or something here, but catching up in the leaders, no. Ah, oh, I got third. I was right there. I was right there. I could have, I could have maybe taken first if I took another go at this. But you know, for my first time ever playing Dirt 5, I'd say that was pretty decent performance there. And also, 
a pretty nice sampling of the frame rate. So I'm going to call that uh, a nice little game test and uh, let's move on to my final game, which is going to be Overwatch. Time for Overwatch, we're at 1440 again with VSync off. I'm going with the Ultra Graphics Pro Quality preset and I've turned the render scale to 100% so the render scale is accurate to the resolution. So Overwatch is a game that I am actually somewhat decent at. I wouldn't claim to be wonderful or excellent but I've rated myself a 7 out of 10 and that's because I've played this game a decent amount so I do know the characters and a decent amount of their abilities and there's a few characters that I've played a decent amount that I think I'm okay at. Like, I think Mora is one of the healers that I'm pretty okay at. I usually queue as flex, so I end up playing a healer or a tank role. Um, DPS, not quite so much, but uh, let's see how we do here. Right out of the gate, we're getting 270 FPS, so I might need to turn some of the settings up a little bit. Oh, we're on the points. We got a kill. We got another kill. Oh, hello. Hello, D.Va. Goodbye, D.Va. All right, we have captured the points. That's good, that's a good start here. Oh look, I'm on fire too. See, see? I can be helpful at this game. It's like, I'm not just dead weight. I don't just suck horribly. It's nice to play a game that I've done a little bit of practicing at. Healing. No! Oh, he just killed my ult. I should have been paying more attention to my health. That's not good. All right, to give the GPU a little bit more challenge, I have upped the resolution to 4K. So this is the only 4K testing I think I'm doing today. Because at 1440, we were getting in the, uh, you know, mid 250s uh, towards 300s range. 4K is a little bit more of a challenge. Of course, Overwatch itself is a game that scales really, really well. Um, there's lots of things you can turn down and it looks like at 4K, if you, again, had one of those very rare uh, 4K 144 hertz monitors, you could probably still get up to 144 hertz. You just have to adjust the settings down a smidge. Just a smidge. Yay! We won. I did get a loot box, and we did see some gameplay test results uh, with some frame rates for Overwatch. So uh, I, think, I think that wraps it up for my testing. I hope I did better gaming this time. So there it is, guys, some real-world 1440p testing with the new AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. I think the card did quite well, and it's definitely a nice sweet spot option for 1440 gaming, if you could find it, of course, at the MSRP, which you probably can't, which is probably why this entire video is moot anyway. This is a bit anecdotal, but the card does stay pretty quiet while under gaming load. The fans are not too noisy at all. However, I did notice a pretty decent amount of coil whine with this particular unit. I talked to AMD about that, and they said that that was something that they hadn't experienced. It is something that will often pop up with a lot of GPUs when you're in game menus or a really high frame rate situation. But I am curious to try some of the third party variants of this card to see if it's an issue with those as well. But that's all the time I have for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Again, if you have comments or feedback or you just want to hear me rant some more, leave me those comments down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out my store on your way out, paulshardware.net for thumbscrew logo emblazoned merchandise, as well as my new beer sets, which are super awesome with the bamboo coasters. Thank you guys so much once again for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.